All right, guys, this is part five to my series on my music collection. That's how long it's taken. Woo! So it's taken me a one video per row now that we're getting into my CDs here. <laughs> so we're on to the fourth row, starting with the Krups. And I used to say that wrong. I used to call them Die Krups. Now, going to see D Creeps in uh, Colorado, was my very first time I visited, I went to see these guys. I made friends with a guy named David. And when I came back to Colorado, um, I ended up moving up the hall from him. Let me see what this is here. And, um, and he ended up dating this girl named Freya, and that was Rosie's daughter. So by going to Die Krups, I met some people that introduced me to Rosie Clearlight, and that's why I live in Montana, so it's a little bit of my story. So I'm going to show you Steve Lawler's when I was starting to listen to like the trance techno, more of the clubby stuff. And then we have here, it's called Wah, to buy a Leibach. So Leibach are known for that one song, Life. Bum, 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 ba -dum. Life is life. This is pretty good, actually. I really love track two on here. It's like a real dancey song with um, German lyrics. Now I have to flip it over because the writing is backwards. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have created a fiasco. Now, I guess I got that out of order because um, there's still more Steve Lawler right here. So I got to fix that. So these are kind of interesting. This is a little more clubby for my taste. You know, I don't don't like the I like just like psychedelic so like that's where Christopher Lawrence makes my day this guy makes me happy because he's more just psychedelic so let's do this um, he's the he's the one thing I've been listening to most right now he's got a radio show called pharmacy radio um, and so he, he's very uh, I think he's very true to his art he's been at it since the 90s and every year um, he's making, it's like the music's evolving, it's not getting old, to the extent that like, yeah, I've been listening to this a long time, it sounds like he's running out of ideas, you know, seems like this guy has great longevity, um, he just keeps going and going, really amazing, so I really love this guy, and the strange thing is I've never had any dreams about him, I've never had any visions about him, and this is what I listen to all the time, and if I could get into the music business, I would love to start out writing music, and getting on his uh, record label and um, being part of Pharmacy Music. I'm just so impressed with it. I actually consider um, what you call jumping on the bandwagon. Now here, Thomas Lear and Robert Reynolds. This reminds me of living in Port Huron, so that's where I was saying my time frame. You know, we left there in 81, so I was like five going on six. And this makes me think of going down to the Blue Water Bridge. We lived in Port Huron at the bottom of Lake Huron, and then there was the Blue Water Bridge that connected to Canada, so ironically, this always made me think of that bridge, and I didn't even know at the time that was the name of the album. So there you have it. It makes me think of Port Huron. That was um, Port Huron, living in that house was such a good time. We had a lot of great parties, you know, um, listening to a lot of great music. There's a KMFDM side project, very kind of comical, because one of the band members left. I think they did that. Um, something I don't listen to a whole lot of, but um, this one particular single is Kick-Ass. It's right up my alley, Mindstream. What would you expect? This one has a couple of great tracks, kind of part of the electronic industrial music. Moby is more going to the, the ravers. I've never become a full-fledged raver, but I have a little bit of stuff in here that, you know, you can see maybe that's a little bit, I'm a little bit raver. You know, I'm a little this, a little that. I'm a little bit techno and a little industrial <laughs> a little punk um manufacturer um i like these guys because they had a very like like a very trance techno sound like some of the trance i'm listening to now like they sounded like that already in the late 80s early 90s peter murphy he was the lead singer of Bauhaus. some people call them Bauhaus. some people call them Bauhaus. i don't know that's um not an english word so i'm never gonna say it correct um, Mussolini Head Kick. Um, there's a song by Cabaret Voltaire called Mussolini Head Kick. So there's some bands I consider to be kind of like, um, I call it military industrial techno, or <laughs> it has like the militariness, you know, like Front 242, Nitzer Ebb, and my little joke, military industrial techno. So uh, My Life of the Thrill Kill Cult. Now, these are people who probably grew up in a Christian family and absolutely fucking hated it. So these people are all rebelling against their mom, and they're doing a good job of it. They have great taste in music, great sense of humor. 
um, all rolled into one and they have an agenda so I definitely understand it um, so there's a type of uh, craziness coming from being too religious and that's pretty much what a lot of their agenda has to do with we're driving ourselves crazy with that it's not helping new order now um, these guys were like my favorite band growing up and I think the most important thing you need is this here and this here this is like the most new orderiest of the new order albums ever that's like when they became new order now they were coming out of being joy division right here this was all going to be joy division and it sounds like it but this is when they like really came out of their shell and the crazy thing is these guys were tripping on acid okay so that's why the music was so ahead of its time those guys were like tapping into other worldly dimensions or something so this is great stuff this is like their singles i remember um getting this and just loving the shit out of it but again um when new order went on and signed a big contract or something i don't know they just started becoming more like a regular radio band of course they're probably good for what they are but you know I like this new order, this type of new order. That's what I love. After that is okay. I don't really collect it anymore. It's so crazy because they were my favorite band. I don't get it. So Nine Inch Nails, I wasn't crazy about them at first, but thanks to my daddy got me to keep listening to them. And this is probably where one of the best albums they made. And so thankfully he got me a copy and made me aware of that. And he flew me to Florida to have me go watch them. He's like, you have to come down. These guys are making music history. We got terrible seats it really sucked going down to florida but we had to see nine inch nails to honor them because they are making music history there this guy really learned from rock and roll and he went his own way and he's a he's a success for that reason he made his own so he got on the radio and everything so that's the crazy thing but i have to give him respect because i think he turned into a real artist so nitzer ebb i had my favorite album on tape this one's okay it came out before noise unit there's um another frontline assembly side project it's um when he gets techno you can feel a little bit of that frontline assembly flavor and especially the earlier one called strategy of violence but i don't have a copy of that but um these ones you can really i think i have two copies of decoder oh my god in different uh cases i don't know why i have them and then this one i was like now this is super juicy i couldn't believe how juicy this this is and then this one um I really hated this one and I hated the picture on it and it turned out um, this was his um, his rotten bratty little girlfriend that he was um, showing off <laughs> so she wanted to be a model and he wanted to be a rock star that can date women under 20 so it's funny you know because I really hated this album and I found out and I'm, and I'm sorry I don't mean to be rude but um, but yeah I mean we can laugh at it in hindsight this is um, Bill Lieb showing off um, his pussy so to speak so and, and strangely enough, I really didn't care for the material before I even knew that. The normal. Now that reminds me of um, Port here on like late 70s. My dad was listening to this um, warm leatherette. And um, TVOD definitely remember these. You know, I even had a little music video in my head for. Dun, 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 dun. So for TVOD, I would imagine these people getting in this car and going down a little bit and then getting out and walking and there'd be like a row of washing machines, you know. I don't know, I just had this crazy music video in my head. I used to love that song. One of my favorite songs when I was like five. But right up there was Big Guy Lay Lie Bouncing Bee and then there was The Orb. Now this is a really good band. I was listening to them quite a bit. Um, they're still around them, putting out music. Really juicy, so... There's the orb, and then there's orbital. <laughs> so that's the orb. And there's orbital. Bunch of fucking copycats. Um, very different sounding. Just similar. Um, they must, you know, how to say great minds think alike. So I got orb and orbital in my collection. You know. So anyways. <gasps> gonna stop this one right here. We're ending section five. And I hope to see you at section six.